Have you ever wondered how those awesome characters in animated and live action films look so incredible? Well, there's one crucial part of the pipeline responsible for that. Lighting. This is the second part of three part series on lighting. If you haven't watched the first part, you can check it out. In this video, we will dive into Blender to light an awesome character scene. If you want to follow along, there's the project file in description. Grab that file and meet me inside Blender. Here I created this scene for lighting. Very optimized. Here we have an old character Aina sitting at the window side. I want to light this scene nearly at golden hour with orange teal lighting combination. Where orange comes from window and teal comes from inside house. Before putting up lights and do some experiment with them, let's manage viewport. I split window in two parts. Top one is for doing all stuff and bottom one for camera view. I split bottom window in two parts on sideways. One of them I use for shader shader editor. Blender gives you access to three types of lights: point, spot, and area. Additionally, the sun has impact on the entire scene and can be placed anywhere. We often give light names based on how they affect the character. For example, the key light reveals the character and fill light fills in shadows. The rim light separates the character from the scene and bounce light provides reflection illumination. Now let's set up our SGRI environment. I'm using this SGRI from Holy Heaven. The link is available in the description. While SGRI effects are seen, we can control it using this slider. To have more control, I add a mix color node and multiply the color to achieve a golden hall lighting effect. Furthermore, I want to separate the SGRI intensity from its effect on our objects. I duplicate the environment texture, add a mix shader node and combine both of them using a light path node and camera ray as the factor. With this setup, we can control the SGRI intensity separately. Nice. I'm making the viewing intensity high and character HDRI intensity low. Now let's set up the key light. To do that, mute the environment light by pressing M. For the key light, I have used an area light placed on the window side. I have customized it with a disc shape to avoid those square light reflection in the eyes. Make sure you enable custom shadows and context shadows. Fine tune the custom distance setting to ensure that the light doesn't affect areas other than character. Adjust the intensity and color as per your references. And I have scaled the light to achieve soft gradients. Additionally, I have added another key light to enhance the character detail. To do this, I have scaled down the light source and adjust the intensity accordingly. To separate the character from the scene, I have used another area light with a small size and low intensity, placing it at the back of the character. Now, here we break the rules of traditional lighting. As we discussed in the previous video about rule breaking, when the main light source comes from the window, you typically don't get light from the back side, creating a rim effect. However, during the lighting process for this scene, I discovered that this approach enhances the overall composition. Now we have done the most crucial part of the lighting. And it's time to enhance the scene with fine details. To fill in shadows, I have added two area lights with medium intensity using the same color as the key light and a larger scale size for the lights. Additionally, we are working on a non ray tracing engine. I have used two area lights with low intensity and diffuse value to 0.2 and specular in volume values to 0. These lights match the key lights color but with reduced saturation. These lights are placed near to the surface and directed towards the character, serving as bounce lights to add depth and realism to the scene. Now unmute the environment light and tweak them if you want. Next, I add sunlight with an intensity of 11 and a similar color to the key light. I angled it towards the window to create realistic window shadows on the curtains, enhancing the scene's realism and believability. To further enhance the scene, I used two point lights with low intensity matching the color of the sun. When working with point lights, 
scaling in viewport won't increase the radius. You will need to adjust the radius using this slide bar. These point lights used for fake GI because the lack of ray tracing in EV. In addition to the key elements, I also used practical lights to add more details to the scene. I add another point light with low intensity, setting the specular values to 0.5 and volume values to 0. To control distance, I enable custom distance and set it to 0.5. These practical lights highlight specific element in the scene beyond the character. For final touches, I want to use tree shadows but adding tree shadows in EV can be challenging. I face much difficulties while doing this but here's how to do it. I start by adding a plane and applying a tree PNG texture to it. In the material setting, change the blend mode and shadow mode to alpha clip. Now I head to the shader editor and delete the principal BSDF shader. Add a transparent BSDF and diffuse BSDF. Assign any color to diffuse BSDF. It's just for visualization in the viewport. Connect both of them with a mix shader using the image texture alpha node as a factor. Next, add another mix shader with the output from last previous mix shader in the first input and another transparent DSGF in the second input. For the factor, use a light path node with camera ray. This setup will give you three shadows without the plane being visible in the camera and viewport. Now just set the three shadows according to you as you want. For the final glory, you can add dust and lens flare texture with same technique as a plane in front of camera. But I personally use this dust particle add-on from Glab Alexandru, which also have a free version. And this is my final result. You can check the full image result on my ArtStation page as YouTube compression may cause some loss of details. For now, you can experiment with different settings to render with EV. And in the next video, I will share my render settings, composition technique and life changing lighting nodes. The next part will also be the last part of this quick series. I hope you like this video and if you want to become a blender nerd, comment your thoughts and hit the subscribe button.